Pokemon is one of the most successful multimedia franchises of all time. And like all successful franchises, we get spin-offs. Some are incredible, like Pokemon Conquest. Others are just gimmicky, like Hey You Pikachu. And today, we will see where one of Pokemon's earliest spin-offs lies on this scale when I complete Pokemon Pinball. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. Today's episode features a game that is a result of two pop culture juggernauts. On one hand, we have Pokemon, a franchise made popular and made famous from video games, and the other, we have Pinball, a medium that was almost completely destroyed by video games. It's kind of a... kind of an ironic thing happening here, huh? Today, we're playing Pokemon Pinball. Let's get right to it. Yes! In 1998, Pokemon came to the United States firing on all cylinders. There were the Pokemon video games, the anime, the trading card game, the comic books, the action figures, the stuffed animals. If you could think of it, there was a Pokemon product for it. Pokemon was even on the cover of Time Magazine, and the series is now the highest grossing multimedia franchise of all time. It is more popular than Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah, that's Star Wars. But because it was coming in so hot, a lot of people thought Pokemon was going to be just a fad of the 90s, like slap bracelets or pogs or the Rachel. Nintendo was ready to try and get as much out of Pokemon as they could. They already had the trading card video game and Pokemon Stadium. They just needed something easy to pick up that everyone could understand. Enter Pokemon Pinball. Pokemon Pinball came out right in between Pokemon Red and Blue and Pokemon Yellow, and it was made in a relatively short amount of time. It utilized the engine from Kirby's Pinball Land, another pinball spinoff to come out about a year after the original game. It also used the Pokedex entries from Red and Blue and music made for future Pokemon games that were in development at the same time. Basically, this game is multiple parts of other games stuck together. If this game was a Pokemon, I would say it would be Magneton. Pinball machines are a great example of a fan that died as quickly as it started. As video games became more popular, production of pinball machines dropped off significantly. In the 90s, they were mostly just big displays of different pop culture properties, from the Addams Family to Indiana Jones. And while I couldn't find any evidence of a Pokemon pinball machine, we do have this game to make up for it. So since this is a Pokemon game, there are a couple of things I know I will have to knock out. The first thing I'm going to have to do to complete it is to catch all of the Pokemon in the game. This is going to be a little bit harder than I originally anticipated. I thought that since this was a spin-off, there would be less Pokemon overall, but I was wrong. I'm going to have to catch all 150 Pokemon from the first generation, but that task is made all the more daunting due to RNG. Next, while I am catching all these Pokemon, I'm going to have to tackle the bonus stages. There are five in total, which serve as bosses throughout the game, and you have to beat one stage to reach the next. This should be pretty easy, so I'm not that worried. But since this is also a pinball game, I'm going to have to try and get the high score for both of the boards in the game. The high score when you start is 500 million points. So this is going to be a lot of hard work. But I can do this! I'm coming for you, Nin! Finally, I'm going to have to catch one more Pokemon. Number 151, Mew. Seeing as this is one of the rare times in a Pokemon video game that you can actually catch Mew, I cannot wait. I just hope I don't have to use pinballs to move a truck. That'll take freaking forever. Pokemon Pinball is a charming little game that is straightforward and gets right to the point. The story is pretty basic. You play pinball. 
Seriously though, that's all there is to it. You can pick it up at any time and start playing it. It gets you straight into the action and doesn't distract you at all with any fluff. The game looks incredibly inviting. You knock around a pinball that looks exactly like a Pokeball in order to score points and catch Pokemon. This Pokeball can be upgraded into a Great Ball, an Ultra Ball, and eventually a Master Ball in order to score the most points. While this doesn't help you with catching Pokemon, it does feel incredibly satisfying to upgrade the Pokeball. The game is split into two different boards, a red board and a blue board. Both have completely different layouts and contain different Pokemon inside of them. For example, the bumpers in the blue board are Shelter, but are Voltorbs in the red board. It's changes like this that make the same gameplay not seem boring. Personally, I like the look of the red board more, mainly because it's more brightly colored. And every time you launch the ball, Ditto moves in and seems like he's going, yeah! The boards are split into two halves. The bottom half contains the flippers and the Pokemon when you try and catch them. The top half contains the bumpers and different Pokemon you want to knock the ball into in order to try and catch or evolve Pokemon. The screen stays on either one half or the other instead of following the ball. This makes it feel a lot easier to time your flippers and memorize the layout of the board. Also, it prevents you from getting sick when you're playing your Game Boy in the car. While the red and blue boards are a clever homage to Pokemon Red and Blue, blue, I feel like it would have felt more satisfying if each location was its own board and you have to unlock more boards based off of score or Pokemon caught. At least it would have made catching Pokemon less infuriating and each one could have had its own boss stage. Ha! Ah, what could have been? The sprites in catch'em mode are larger and more detailed than in the earlier main Pokemon games. This allows them to have fun animations and actually react to when they get hit with the Pokeball. It's kind of adorable. And if you go into the Pokemon Decks, you can watch the sprites if you hold the start button over a Pokemon. It makes the game feel like more than just a cash-in and I really appreciate it. The only real complaint I have is with an addition intended to make the game feel more like a pinball machine. You can put a AAA battery inside of the actual game pack in order to make the game have rumble settings. It ends up shaking the whole Game Boy, but it is more annoying than it's worth. It's also loud as hell. I have memories of trying to play this game quietly when I should be sleeping, but the rumble pack would be so loud my mom would hear it down the hallway. Thanks, Pikachu. Speaking of Pikachu, this game sounds great. The music is all taken from different Pokemon songs, which can never be a bad thing. And the sound effects are very satisfying. Each one makes whatever you just did feel like an achievement. If I could have a Pokemon caught sound follow me whenever I did something, I'd be the happiest man alive. Overall, Pokemon Pinball is like a bag of potato chips. It's quick, tasty, and it makes me feel good. I like it. Pokemon Pinball brings the addictive gameplay of Pinball to Pokemon's goal of trying to catch them all. While it works well for a little bit, it gets really frustrating over a long period of time. The basic Pinball gameplay is there. Hit the ball with the flippers, get points, and try not to lose that ball. You can also tilt the board to nudge your ball a little more to either side. You start off with three Pokeballs in order to catch all the Pokemon and get as many points as possible. And if you lose all three, it is game over. However, there are many, many tricks you can do to make your game last longer. You can unlock Ball Saver, which prevents you from losing your Pokeball, and also charge up Pikachu to save your ball when it falls to the sides. The layout is different for both of the boards. While I like the look of the red board more than the blue board, it is much harder to play on. Trying to get the ball up past Ditto to evolve your Pokemon is so frustrating, and sections keep getting closed off, making it harder to travel around in general. The blue board is much easier. There's an arrow that automatically guides the ball either into Slowpoke's mouth, Cloyster's shell, or up towards the shelter bumpers. It makes it a lot easier to score points and catch Pokemon. It's like deciding whether to choose Charmander or Squirtle at the beginning of the main games. Charmander looks cool, but it's harder to use at the start of the game. Squirtle is rounder, friendlier, and can handle Brock's gym no problem. But we all know what the right answer is here in this one, guys. It's Bulbasaur!
In order to catch a Pokemon, you must activate catch him mode while already mid game. In order to do so, you have to move the ball up the right pathway two to three times, depending on how where you want the Pokemon to be. You then have to enter either Bellsprout's mouth on the red board or Cloyster's shell on the blue board. Then you have to hit the bumpers in the top part of the board six times to fully illustrate an image of the Pokemon. And then you have to hit the Pokemon four times. After you do all of that, the Pokemon will be caught. While this seems like a lot, this all happens very quickly. You can also evolve Pokemon by going up the left path three times instead of the right. You then have to enter Slowpoke's mouth on the blue board or go up past the Ditto and enter a new hole on the red board. Then you have to hit specific specific items on the board pointed out to you by arrows. Hitting one of these spots causes experience, an evolution stone, or a link cable to appear. These are the items you have to collect in order to evolve the Pokemon. These different items are a nice touch and make the game less repetitive. Once you initiate catch a mode, you have two minutes to either catch your dude or evolve it before time is up. But if your ball accidentally falls out of the play zone within the first minute, you'll get to launch it again for free, so it's not completely annoying. However, what is annoying is is the RNG. Once you start a board, your play area is randomly chosen from a list of locations in the Kanto region. What Pokemon you can catch are dependent on the area that you are in. After catching a certain amount of Pokemon, you're able to enter another location, eventually traveling to the Indigo Plateau. But the worst part of all is that you don't know what Pokemon will be randomly generated for you when you enter catch em mode. This gets incredibly frustrating, especially when you run into a Bellsprout for the sixth time in a row. After you catch Catch or evolve these three Pokemon, you are able to enter a bonus stage. These work kind of like mini bosses and are a ton of fun to play. For the blue board, you first get to collect coins from Meowth, then try and hit three diving seal with a Pokeball. They're both fun, but the Meowth one is the most memorable because Meowth is a sassy kitty. Yo, is Meowth flipping me off? Somebody censor that! On the red board, you have to knock down all the Diglets and take on Doug Trio. But the best bonus stage is the Ghastly stage. You start off trying to hit some Ghastly, and then you have to hit some Haunter. But after that, things get quiet, and then a giant Gengar appears on the stage! He walks out towards you slowly, step by step, and you have to stop it! It was genuinely scary when I was a kid. I wish there was more of this in the game. The final bonus stage for both boards is battling Mewtwo. He's located in a lab and surrounds himself with psychic balls, I guess? This one's pretty hard, but not nearly as memorable as Giant Gengar. But like I said earlier, the most disheartening part of this game has got to be the randomness of finding the right Pokemon. You can play incredibly well, but it won't matter if the game decides not to give me what I need. It totally takes it out of my hands, and that sucks. Don't worry, man. I know you can do this. Alex, what are you doing here? Well, we're streaming for Beard Bros in a little bit, my dude. Also, it's a Pokemon video, so I'm legally required to appear in it. Dude, I can't do this anymore. I need some kind of motivation. I can do that. You just complete that game. I will inspire you. Ever since he was a young boy, he threw that Pokeball from Kanto onto Hoenn. He had to catch them all But he ain't seen nothing like this on a Nintendo console That super beard boy Complete Pokemon Pinball The RNG was already difficult to deal with regarding normal Pokemon But to catch Mew? God damn it! First you need to travel to all the different locations, eventually making it to the Indigo Plateau. While you're doing that, you have to make it through all the bonus stages on that board. Twice! After all of that work, you only have a 1 in 16 chance of Mew even showing up at all! Filling out his picture is the same, hitting the bumper six times. But catching Mew? It didn't happen! I hit him with the Pokeball eight times, and I didn't even catch him! What am I doing wrong here?! Wait, let me look it up. Alright. According to the internet, you have to hit Mew with the Pokeball 1,024 times. What? 1,024 times? That's flippin' impossible! Wait, Gerard, check the Pokedex! Oh! Oh, thank God. I got the Pokedex entry anyways. It says right here that Mew is rarely seen and is said to be a Mirage. Dude, is this Mew even the real Mew or is it a Mirage? Dude!
unfortunately, completing the game doesn't do anything. Well, that's not entirely true. If you catch all 151 Pokemon, you get a crown on your high score screen. That being said, I did get the top high score for the game. Take that, Nin! Despite that moment at the very end, Pokemon Pinball was very fun to pick up and play. The controls are very responsive, and it looks great for the Game Boy Color. However, the use of RNG makes this game painful to complete, and while it may not be the most time-consuming, there isn't enough here to justify finishing the whole game. While I completed Pokemon Pinball, there were 79 Pokemon caught, 72 Pokemon evolved, 10 leaderboard spots taken, 23 hours of total playtime, and one naughty kitty. Get out of here. I want you off my screen. No demonetization for me. Get out. While the main Pokemon games are big adventures inside of a portable package, Pokemon Pinball is the exact opposite. It's a fun distraction for a little bit, but it's nothing worth putting all of your time and energy into. And I think that's exactly how it's meant to be enjoyed. Pokemon Pinball is one of those games where it's an awesome time through and through. However, doing what we do here on the show, the completionist journey is one that is trifled with mess and ruin. There's no point in collecting all the Pokemon in the game, and while it is fun to do that, this game is kind of like potato chips. Yeah, they're great to snack on every now and then, but if you just keep eating potato chip after potato chip after potato chip in that succession, you're gonna get sick of potato chips and want something like a burger or a salad or something. So, with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Play it. Play it. That's all tell me ever today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you're new here and like what you see, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. What do you want to see next done here on the show? If you're really new, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to stay up to all notifications going forward right here on the channel. Our new upload days are Wednesdays and Saturdays. So come back Wednesdays, come back Saturdays. If you want to check out The Bachelor, give it a clear tap right here. And I've been Gerard. I'll see you Wednesday for another video. Bye.